Hello, everybody. I'm so glad everyone came to our <laughs> vampire party. <laughs> As I try to talk in fangs this whole video. I know, right? It's a little challenging. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. On this, uh, on this month's episode of the Blades and Bodice Rivers Book Club, we are going over our book of the month, which was the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires <laughs> by Grady Hendrick. <laughs> so um, we're excited. And I'm Amanda, the Naughty Librarian. I guess you guys all know that because you're on my channel. But does everyone else want to introduce themselves? Sure. <laughs> Bethany, you go. Bella, Bella, <laughs> Bella, Bella, Bella. Yeah. So we were all literary vampires. For anybody who's wondering, I have my sparkly baseball hat and glitter and uh, a pomegranate. If anybody's read Midnight Sun, so I'm post post vampiric Bella Cullen. It's gonna be like a soccer mom. Anyway, uh, I'm also <laughs> excuse the, the talking with the fangs, but I'm it's also be Bethany from Beautifully Bookers, Bethany. <laughs> Everyone's like scared. It's so funny. Um, I read a lot of books, lots of sci-fi, fantasy, romance, and a little bit of everything else. Yeah. Uh, Art, um, know, vampire. Would you like to go? <laughs> I was the only one who did not procure fangs that that fit their tiny mouth. So I'm done with these now. But yes, um, my name is Mara. I could, well. From books like Woe, but tonight I am Amélie Argenot from the French branch of the Canadian Argenot Vampires of Lindsay French Canadian. I well, no, it's it's a whole thing. Like they're originally from <laughs> France and then they came to Canada, but they're originally from Atlantis. So it's Atlantis to France to Canada, clearly. And uh, I've got my bag of blood from Argenot Labs, Canada. Uh, yeah, books like Whoa. I read a lot of books also. I read 35 books this month. Uh, and I'm an omnivore. I read, I read it all. So I think I'm going to hit 34. It's like, it's been a big month. Well, I went on a oh, Ruby yeah. Jackson binge. So <laughs> I did a lot of Courtney Milan and Nalini Singh. Yeah. <laughs> good. That's a good month. How about you, Blade, by the way? Excellent. I'm Blade. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Are you going full Wesley Snipes and you do all the interviews in character as Blade? <laughs> She's a method actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hi guys. I'm going to take these off because I literally cannot see the screen. It's just all black, and I'm hoping for the best. So I can't see anything either. Yeah, I'm just I'm just hoping for the best. La, la, la. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll just well, whatever. We'll we'll be we'll be blind together. <laughs> So originally I was supposed to be from like interview of the vampire, foppish New Orleans vampire. But um, last minute I realized my corset looked pornographic. So I had to switch it up. <laughs> I mean, we weren't so, complaining. I, yeah, I mean, it was you know designed to do, but um, it was a bit much. <laughs> so um, since, you know, uh, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires happened in the nineties, I was like, I could be a nineties vampire. I could do this. Yeah. I'm a radical. <laughs> so. Blade is from the 90s. He is from the 90s. Well, the movie. <laughs> That's why this yeah, happened. Got, I'm pretty sure we were talking vampires. about this. We're going to be 90s vampires. And I was like, Blade? <laughs> and you were like, <laughs> be <"Bing>, Blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, you, I was yeah. on the Blade train. Yeah. So yeah, we all are all vampires. Me and, me and Bella are early 2000s we're early aughts yeah, vampires yeah. so we've got you know like it, it works yeah yeah you know I'll, I'll my, thinking, my thinking was i was like i have glitter <laughs> okay my thinking was i can look canadian i lived there for three years <laughs> i can't stop playing with my teeth i know it's like it's weird like how do you do you have a clown yeah. You know what's weird though is that I can see the I can see the screen reflected in Amanda's glasses, but you cannot see the screen reflected in mine. <laughs> yeah, that seems appropriate. I can't see yeah, that at all. Like, Everyone else can see the screen, but me apparently. My glasses are a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> Happy like Halloween to everyone in the chat. Yay. Yeah, hi yeah. everybody! Thanks for coming to the vampire party. Yeah. yeah. So we all read this book. Um, general thoughts to start with before we discuss 
Yay! Yay! Four thumbs up. <laughs> four, four fangs up. Yeah. Um, have you guys read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix? Mm -mm. No, not yet. I have, I have actually. Is it good? I've it heard really good things. Same, yeah, it happens too. in the same universe as this book. Um, it happened yeah, in, I heard that. Yeah, in the same town, but like uh, a few years before the events of Vampires. So, uh, but that one, you know, like, can friendship defeat the devil? I don't know, that kind of story. It, it, it's similar in tone, I, I think. It can. I, I, it does, spoiler. <laughs> it seems like it can. Yeah, um, there's like, I don't know, I think Southern Book Club's guide is, is better written because obviously he has grown as an author over the years, but uh, the tone is the same. You'll, if you read it, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, I see that. I need to see. Oh, I've given up. I know. No, yeah, I, I, it would drive fair. me crazy. Yeah, it looks a lot cooler, but like, <laughs> I need to see. <laughs> yeah. You've got great, great eyeshadow. I was gonna say you did your eye makeup. I didn't, yeah. so these are staying on. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you beat your face for the gods. You're good. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, I love this. This is my first time reading anything from Grady Hendrix. I don't know how long I can deal with the whiffs with this, but we're, we're <laughs> I mean, gonna try. I literally. <laughs> Just hey, channel, your inner, channel your inner, channel your inner Glaxo. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't torture anyone. Anyway. Things are going to get really dark. <laughs> um, no, I really love this. I mean, it's been a few months now since I read it, but uh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting and it, I don't know, it did things I was, I was expecting it to be more funny than it was. But then I really liked the way it was dealing with like race related issues. It was interesting. I actually had Grady Hendrix. Um, I hosted him on a panel for Social Distance Book Fest. So I, if anybody's interested, that's still up on my channel. And he, I thought was a really great guest and had interesting things to say about mystery horror stuff. But um, I picked this up because of that. And then I finally got to it and I really loved it. Like you said, Bethany, mm -hmm. I was expecting it to be darker <laughs> or sorry, let me reverse that. I was expecting it to be funnier than it was, mm -hmm. but I still think it's, it's like darkly funny. I don't know that it's like, ha 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 funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, like thematically, I thought this was great. I thought the writing was good and I'm from the South. I grew up like this was very recognizable to me. Like I knew these moms, I knew their quilted <laughs> jean vests. <laughs> Um, and I thought he did a really good job of like capturing that time and place really well. Yeah. Blade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really liked it. I expected, I expected to enjoy it, but not love it. And I actually really loved it. Yay. Yay. I was surprised by how much I liked it. And I was surprised by how quickly I could read it. Like the something about his writing style, I just flew through it. Like I would get through a hundred pages yeah. and I was like, one day I couldn't put it down. Same. It wasn't, yeah. I mean, like it was that I was interested, but it wasn't even that I was so interested. <laughs> it was just that his writing style flowed so smoothly mm -hmm. that I didn't even notice I was reading as much as I was. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like his thing because I've now I've read two books by him. Like I'm an expert. <laughs> but, um, I like how we, he usually- On this like, panel you are. Um, he usually like bases his main characters on people who are generally not the person that would be the lead or, you know, even listen to like in, um, best friends exorcism is two teenage girls in the eighties, like who's listening to them. And then this one is like suburban housewives and how like no one listens to them. They're irrelevant. So yeah. it's like having them be like the adventure heroine of the story is an interesting idea because it's like, yeah, maybe maybe your suburban mom was cooler than you thought. <laughs> yeah. I really liked it. I mean, I think I, of all of us, I'm the only one who is a mom. <laughs> yeah. And so, read, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but reading that was interesting because I was like, yeah, like I get this. I mean, thank goodness. I have a great husband who is actually <laughs> listens to me and is helpful around the yeah. house. And like, I don't do everything myself, but I've had a lot of friends who live lives quite similar to, you know, what some of these women are dealing with. And like parenthood is rough and like a fairly unappreciated job. And I don't know, it was interesting seeing how all of that played out, 
I mean, I mean, I, I did for come, them. I came close to punching the book at some of the things Carter was saying to <laughs> Patricia. Oh, yeah. I was yeah, expecting that's what again in the chat. Like I expected yeah. to find him to be a misogynist and to be annoyed. I wasn't expecting the rage that I felt yeah. at him. I was like, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you so hard. And I think that to me was what, I mean, so thematically, like, and I'm sure we'll get to all the race stuff, like that for sure. In terms of the character work, I really appreciated, I felt like this was very relatable, good and evil. Like, yeah. I appreciated that, especially the female characters, I think are rounded in that like none of them are great, but none of them are terrible really either. They're just like, they feel like real people who have strengths and weaknesses, but then the husbands are awful and you hate them, but it's not because, I mean, some of them are actually abusive, but like mostly it's just because they're dickheads in the same way that, like you said, Bethany, I feel like we all have friends who have these dickhead husbands who are just like so dismissive and like, maybe they're not overtly terrible people, but like they're, they're not showing up for their wives. They're not showing up for their kids. Like they're just living, living such selfish lives that are supported by like everyone around them. And you just, ugh, I thought he captured that really well. Yeah. Which again, like it kind of shocked me every time I reminded myself that Grady Hendrix is a man who wrote this. As I was reading it, I was like, this feels like it was written by a woman and it's yeah. like full of personally experienced female rage. And I was like, Seriously. yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> impressed. Yeah. Cause like I'm always a little on the fence when I'm reading a book written by a guy, especially with female protagonists, you know? But like I thought he kind of nailed it. Agreed. Yeah. So let's talk about that one for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my yeah. God. He was creepy. He, you know what? He reminded me yeah. of. Um, well, mm-hmm. yeah. Or oh gosh, I should know his name, and I can't think of it right now. But like the the kid who more recently shot people. Oh yeah, it's kind of sad that we can't pick out which event that was. Yeah, the <laughs> like, one, the all one all that's in Wisconsin. Is yeah. that what you're thinking of? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, again, it's a good reflect because, like, part of his acting out is because something terrible is happening to him. So, yeah. like, you know, the cliche, hurt people hurt. Like, you know, yeah. they, like, you're just finding the same way these white women are finding mm-hmm. ways to, like, displace their positions of power onto less less powerful women. He's, like, trying to find power where he can. And it's in this, like, racist, creepy ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I think I see somebody saying like how they thought it wasn't a big deal, which is true. Like the parents being so dismissive of like him being obsessed with Nazis and like gas chambers and like, that's disturbing. You need to get your child help and not just assume that they're fine. Well, I felt like a lot of those like things, well, for one, I was pissed off that Carter thought it was psycho that his kid was into Nazis, but was fine with his BFF, you know, vampire man talking to his kid about Z- or about Nazis, you know, like that, yeah, that yeah, disconnect yeah. where he was well, fine with it. Nazis. And it's not like he didn't know that the yeah. vampire was talking to his kid about it. He was there and he was yeah. fine with it. And then later he's like, well, that's not normal. And I was like, you fucking psycho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I felt like all those cognitive times- Cognitive dissonance, was, Carter, cognitive dissonance. I just felt like there were so many like times when like they could have a conversation with the kid and be like, I see you're interested in history and it's totally fine to be interested in history. And in fact, this is really a fascinating part of history. So yes, let's learn about it, but let's do it together. Like let's learn about it together and let's talk about what all this means because like like telling them that they can't learn about it, they're just gonna wanna learn about it more and just letting them free range it is not great. No, well, and I mean, what they're focusing on matters too, right? Like whose stories are you reading? Um, I think matters. Or even if you, I mean, fine, you pick what stories you want to read, but let's discuss, okay, what did we, what from that story did we learn and what historical context do we need to apply? Mm -hmm. Like maybe let's read some Eichmann in Jerusalem. Like let's get some (laughs) banality of evil, Hannah Arendt realness happening up in here. Um, Yeah. I don't see Carter being well-versed in. Well, um, so. Yeah, that's a good point. Who just is like, oh, well, I mean, there is like a insinuation in the book that he's been sleeping around, but like it's never definitively proven. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, the vampire, it is. Told, I mean, the vampire told everybody, like, yeah, your husband, your husbands are all sleeping with these hookers, but like, 
we don't see that happen. And like, I don't really trust the the honesty of a vampire. I but thought there was. I may be misremembering, but I thought she confronted him and he basically admitted it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, miss, I, I may have misread that. I, no, I basically I thought that's like what happened too. I kept thinking that he was sleeping around because women kept calling. calling and the then house. I immediately yeah. stopped by almost like because the vampire told her that he was doing it. It almost made me immediately disbelieve it. I was like, then he must not be doing it because yeah. like. The vampire saying this is doing it to mm-hmm. gaslight her. He's like telling her this so that she'll hate him. Yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I had thought too. There was like a confrontation near the end where he. Did we just? Did we both just hallucinate that scene? I don't know. I, I feel like that happened. <laughs> I read it in this <laughs> week that didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think we. Okay. Saying and then I read it. Someone's right. saying he yeah. did in the hospital at the end. Okay. Now I want to know. I'm like, I'm in the not. hospital. That's what somebody in the uh, Maggie in the comments was saying. But who was in the hospital at the end? Slick? The the girl who, the woman who, didn't she die? Yeah, but. Yeah. yeah. But, and he, like, I think Carter comes the to the hospital. hospital. Carter didn't go to the hospital to see Slick. That's a whole I other subject he, like, I have a lot of feelings about, actually. Anyway, there's no consensus here. He Like, let's be real. He's probably fucking around. Like. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but. Like, uh, yeah. Okay, so, okay, I do think, um, you know, because um, Patricia is wounded, so she's not in a hospital. She's in yeah. bed. In exactly. Grace's house. Oh, maybe, she, yeah, maybe it's when she's wounded and she's asking him for the divorce. He just doesn't deny it. So, like, she yeah. says something about, something about that, and he just doesn't yeah. deny it. And she's like, I want a divorce. Well, I guess That's I read cute. that as admission, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, if you weren't, you also, would he's just, deny it. <laughs> Yeah, I take the point oh. of like, don't believe what this piece of shit vampire says, but right. I also think. But I also feel like. Yeah. Him so it's like, which piece of shit do you, you know? I feel like him sleeping around. around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, the only so, thing he did wrong was sleep around. I really don't think it's nearly as bad as all the other things he did. Yeah. Oh my God. He did a lot of yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Things. Like, I would I much rather he was like, sleeping around and nothing else. I feel like it's like the straw, like the final straw. <laughs> Kind of the thing. final straw. <laughs> yeah, you gave like, me just... chlamydia. I'm done. And see, I also <laughs> feel like he kind of. I mean, there's admission and there's admission because I feel like when he tells later the kids that they're getting a divorce because it's mom's idea and mom wants it this way, like that's kind of like saying that like this is all her idea. I had nothing to do with it, as opposed to saying like you know, because if you're cheating, then you're the party at fault, like in a divorce. Well, I think it's like he he doesn't want to be the bad guy. And well, that's yeah. like a, it's like a continuation of like I want to maintain this image for my children and like other people of who I supposedly am, and so oh, it's your mom's fault. At <laughs> like, the end, when he says that he's keeping the house and everything, and that she's leaving, and who do they want to live with? And the kids are like, "Mom," I was like, yes. "Yeah." No, it's well, just, and like it's such a... is an epitome of male privilege, where he's just like I, he doesn't have any concept of taking responsibility for his actions. Mm-hmm. That doesn't yeah. exist to him. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, but I mean, when, when the kids divorce, choose... she asked for it, not all the shit I yeah. did. But I love that the kids choose to go with her because, like, basically yeah. what that's saying is, like, for all of your bullshit, like, at the end of the day, the people who actually live with you know who you are. And, like, mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, you can yep. keep the house. I'm going to go live with mom in her crappy condo or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end, I was thinking, man, I hope she gets those kids into therapy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do yeah. we also feel like the it was intentionally leaving room for a sequel because the vampire is not dead? Maybe. Uh, I mean, or it could be like an open ended kind of. I, I mean, I it's something that would happen in the future. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe just the like way that horror, movie. like novels slash movies, tend to have that kind of like, yeah, he's dead. Or is he? Or like, is he? Then, yeah. If the movie does it. well, then they then he's not. And if the movie doesn't do well, then he is. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't I'm know why they didn't burn the body. They just cut it up and put it in the crypt. But it's just like, I, y'all I got matches. Like, set it on fire. Well, because it needs to be a higher temperature to burn a body. Like, you can't just burn it in a regular... They have access to a crematoria. I think, but I think like they the can't water. operate it by themselves. Like they have, no, no. like they know the people. I guess it's that pre-internet. Work. They can't just like Google it. And that yeah. scene was intense, though. Of them like literally cutting up his body yeah. while he was like, that was wow. that was yeah. wild. You didn't think it was gonna go there, wild. and then it's like, no. oh man, they just yeah. <laughs> Oh man, there's a lot of pent up feminine rage <laughs> that just all got taken out on this vampire. Yeah. 
<laughs> Seriously. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of scenes that were like, oh my God. I was just like on the edge or like the stuff like, where she's oh. hiding in his attic and there's like yes. bugs and like, like I was like, oh ears. my God. Did no, I also I, like I thought it was really was unique? It. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna what? say, wasn't there like a rat scene too? Do yeah, I remember that right? Like, I remember yeah, being gross. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yes. Yeah, I think I blocked that out because that was a lot. But um, yeah. I also thought it was a really, I was gonna say a really unique like um, monster like design for like how the vampirism works. Like as opposed to just like the yeah. usual fangs. Like it's like, yeah. uh, it was like a mosquito. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like a face hugger from Alien to me, like, but with like pincers. It was like yeah. a long like thing that came out of his mouth. So I'm like, it's like a mosquito to me. I don't know. We, we have different like viewpoints. Yeah, obviously. but, but like, okay. so like, I also I was wondering if we knew where that came from, like where Grady Hendrix came up with that, because like it was seemed really weird and unique to me. But then I've been watching the Blade movies for research um, to get into character, <laughs> and the second Blade movie has vampires <laughs> whose jaws come out and something mm -hmm. comes out. And I'm wondering if, like, Grady Hendrix based his vampire on Blade 2. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I think part of it might be right. It's it's also using it as a stand-in for sexual assault. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, I mean, vampirism and, has always been, like, sexual Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, but this is in a more, involved. in a much more, like, direct way, right? Yeah. yeah. Can we talk about Slick for a minute? Because this is the only part that made me give the book four stars <sighs> instead of five. Because I felt her sexual assault was just gratuitous and almost unnecessary. Um, it still bothers me now. It has been two weeks since I read the book. Hmm. So I don't know. I thought, I felt it was Can, like, did that need to happen? So what, well, it wasn't on the page, okay. right? No. They described it in vivid detail. Well, she told it to Patricia. Like, what yeah. To so yeah. we weren't yeah. there when it was actually happening, but she told Patricia all of the stuff that happened. So it was like a full recount of what we missed. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's gratuitous. And like how dark it got for a minute. And I was like, did it need to be there? I don't know. It still like haunts me now. Like I'm still like not over it. Interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to process that because I'm very sympathetic to it very much bothers me people using sexual assault as like how to make your bad guy bad. And I didn't feel that way in this book. Like, I, I, I'll tell you, I didn't read it in detail because it was getting pretty specific. And I tend yeah. to, whenever that happens, just sort of skim. Um, but the fact that it happened and was described, I think the reason it didn't feel gratuitous to me is because the book seems to be building towards increasingly text as opposed to subtext with all of the sexual assault stuff like it it's insinuated insinuated and you start getting more and more details and then it just sort of like becomes more and more text instead of the subtext mm -hmm. so to yeah. me that was a part of that sort of ramp i think but he i not sexually assault anyone else in the book like he he's like with her daughter at one point which is also creepy but he's not like having sex with her he's like sucking her blood through her leg which is but it's implied. Like, but it's implied. I, like that's well, all, like I found though. like I actually found that more disturbing, honestly. It's like, disturbing. The stuff with the, like the stuff with the kids. And I think if he's having sex with them, they would have ended up like slick. Because but I think that, okay, but when there was no reason for it. There was a reason for it because his master plan was to have a legacy. And like, mm -hmm. yes, this is all how he keeps himself alive, but like long yeah. game is to have progeny. Yeah, but which it, which, it, which honestly, I'm like, I think escalated because yeah. until then you didn't know that was an option, and yeah. then when he does that, you're like, oh, he can do even worse things, like than just suck our blood. Well, and I think the thing is too is that then you get into like concepts like um, colonization of the body. I think it's like a similar thing, right? That it's like literally using your own body against you to carry something evil into the world. And so like, I think it's, I mean, I, Again, yeah, I don't know. An alien because an alien like face hugger implant eggs. Yeah. You know what? If he would have face huggered her and implanted an egg in her body, <laughs> I would not have been as bothered as like how he did it because it just felt like it was too gratuitous for me. I don't know. It really bothers me. I'm still bothered by it. Interesting. <laughs> Well, Jashana, I think, is mentioning that one of her friends had a similar reaction, Amanda, that you did. And and I think, well, yeah, and even before that, but that this one, I think it, that comment in particular 
I think, yeah, that is a very part. I think that's part of like thematically the idea of, of um, sexual abuse, long-term sexual abuse, the idea that the victim takes pleasure in it. And part of, to me, what was, and again, I'm not invalidating your perspective because I think just it will hit different people different ways. To me, the reason it didn't feel as gratuitous was because it was part of his unmasking. So it's like there's two different kind of flavors of sexual predators, people who are like seducers versus people who are like abusers, you know, like more overt. And to me, that was like him finally being fully unveiled of, you know, whatever pleasure there, he's. I think there's different ways they could have done that because that was the only one in the book and having this character, it just felt like particularly cruel. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the only part that like got me. I'm just like, I don't think that's necessary. Like it, it, it was been, a lot. I mean, it I mean, yeah, a it lot was, of different things yeah. and I would have been fine. Yeah. Like the face hugger thing, like there's a lot of other things he could have done. He could have even just made her like a slave to him through mind control and like sucking that her That would blood. be worse. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> A lot of things that could have happened, but like the whole thing with Patricia and her, and she's like helping get the junk out of her, and like it's just yeah. well, well but I I, 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 I like up to Patricia's assault was as as awful to me, like even though guess, it doesn't fully like that to me was as yeah. bad like mm -hmm. that build up because you know what's gonna happen and like yeah, yeah. so I, saying, I think actually mm -hmm. appreciated that the way that they handled that because for me I read it as like helping demonstrate the true horror of what rape actually is because you are seeing yeah. this aftermath yeah. in this really gross way but I I think yeah I don't know so I, to me it, it felt like a way of saying like yeah this is actually a truly horrific gross thing the more so than I think maybe what some people I don't know I think especially because with men, because this is the part where I'm like, it's a male author, you know, is that like, I think sometimes for men, it can get glossed over a little bit if it's not a woman that they feel direct responsibility for. Yeah. Like, I don't know that it's always taken that seriously. And so I liked that it was so horrific because I think it was supposed to mirror the fact that like, you know, like sexual assault and rape is really horrific in that way yeah. and can be po poisonous, you know? I agree. So it's like, also it's horrific, but like, it should be horrific, and I'm glad that it was horrific from that point of view, exactly. But I'm just like, did it need to be there? I don't know. We don't even need to be talking about this for the whole video. This is a vampire party. <laughs> yeah. I feel like so to me, like when I think one of the reasons that I am more scared of zombies than anything else is because of that loss of self and loss of like being able to rely on your own mind and you're not in control. And I think it's scarier to me that his like the neurotoxin or whatever that he's using on these people that they don't know what's happening, they're enjoying it, and they're not able to say, it's like he's roofing them. And yeah. losing mm -hmm. control is more scary to me than something horrifying happening to me while I know about it. And like, I'm around to like either fight back or not, but I'm there for it and making decisions for myself. I'm not being controlled, like that I can't rely even on my own mind anymore. That's way scary to me. I hear you on that, yeah. All of that I think we can agree was like, I think well rendered whether or not we agree it should have been there. I think the yeah. execution was well done and therefore it was very hard to read and like a lot. Like it was a it was It was a lot. It was a lot. It yeah. was a lot. Yeah. So I didn't hear any like content warnings before I went into it. So I was like, what oh, the you fuck? didn't you didn't? Oh. No. Oh, okay. Maybe that was part of it because I knew I didn't, I didn't know. know Bethany had read it. I, I knew know. that there was like like shit yeah. went down in this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, oh yeah. no, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's knew, even more so. That would be that would be hard be a to go lot. in without knowing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of yeah. knew. I didn't know everything, but I knew enough to kind of be prepared for there being some stuff with like. I knew there was some kind of a thing akin to pedophilia and whatever going on, so I kind of knew going in like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. So let's 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 try to move on to a happier topic. Yeah, it's kind of it's hard, hard for this book, I feel like, because it's because some like real shit in it. I, I mean, well, it's a dark yeah. book. Um, so uh, we could talk about racism. I was gonna say, like, where do we go next? Like the racial. Let's talk about the female book. friendships because that's like I'm a big part of this book. I think that's important as well that these females. Yeah. Have all kind of found each other in this town, and like 
maybe they're outcasts or they're kind of don't fit the mold, but they found each other and they all really stick together for the most part. Even Grace at the end, who I'm kind of like into because she's just like, cleaning is her superpower and I'm like into it. You know who so, Grace really reminded me of is Betty Draper. <laughs> she's like turn a blind eye to everything all the time because the aesthetic is the most important thing until she hits that breaking point and then yeah. she's like crazy. There's shit going down. Yeah, yeah. So I think like uh, another theme in his book was just like friendship and like community and like caring about another human being. And that kind of goes into the racism aspect and everything else, it's just caring about another human being that's not you. Yeah. It's a big part of it. I like the like the little group of friends and their friendship and I liked it and they all had like different personalities. And I don't know, I like I like the female friendships and the same with best friends exorcism. It's about female friendship, you know. Mm. And yeah. you guys are and my I, friends. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we have female friendship. No, I um <laughs> I liked, I did like it. And I, I think part of what I liked was that it wasn't idealized. Like I liked that they did fail each other as well as come through for each other. Like I thought that was a nice, like I said earlier, yeah, I like yeah. that most of the people in this book are not just like good or bad. Like they have like actual real flaws. And I, I appreciated that piece of it. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think it was interesting. It was nice to see the friendships legitimately develop later in the book. I feel like early on, it was very PTA drama. I don't know. <laughs> Bethany was triggered from her own PTA experience. I love the reasons for believing her, like suddenly quoting the Bible and being like, that's why we should believe her, that this is a drug dealer. Because the Bible says. And you're like... That was very relatable to me. And then like one of the other ones is like, are you yeah. serious right now? And you're like, yeah, I'm serious. It, I mean, it was, I agree, it was relatable. I didn't grow up in the South, but I grew up in certain religious communities. So it was very, it's very it's relatable. Just, <laughs> like this felt very like my childhood. Like, yeah. 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 Um, and like the kind of like bitchiness that's kind of always underlying some of the things that are going yeah. on. Like that felt very real to me. Um, Southern ladies yeah. are not nice. Well, I mean, I th no, <laughs> but I mean, I mean book, they'll but... do it with a smile. Right. I mean, but it's, it's yeah. interesting, right. That like, in some ways it's because they have so little control of anything. And I think you even see that with the one, I can't remember their names at this point, but the one who's like obsessively cleaning her silver, right. After her husband right. abused her, is that what's going on? I mean, it's like, yeah like when you don't have control of things that are going on of your children, of your husband, of your life, like obsessively focusing on these minutia. And I think that's real. Like a, a lot of people do that. But I did also appreciate her making the case for it's being like, I clean things and I keep the house running and that is important. And that is, it's important. Like, it's fine that I find validation in that. And I don't need to want more than that. Like I can be happy with this and I can take pride in this and that's okay. And if, it's your problem yeah. if you don't take pride in this. And I appreciated that point of view being represented. Yeah, yeah like the value, like, like- Very feminist. Yeah, like, I mean, homemaking is like a like true skill. Mm -hmm. Like me, I haven't vacuumed in like three weeks. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not very good at things, but in my defense, you know, I, I broke my vacuum. So it's like, I can't- You know, I- it is shocking how messy children are because we never used to have to clean our house that often. And literally like, I like I can vacuum and the next day I'm like, oh good, there's goldfish crumbs all over the rug again, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think I'm the only one drinking at this party. I but, just finished my wine actually. Oh, did I tell you I started a bottle fresh? <laughs> there's a third of it left. <laughs> I'm having oh, a good time, I, everybody. I yeah. think I, I drank Didn't about turn. a third of a bottle of wine. Well, I okay, figured Bethany yeah. came out to Los Angeles once and oh hung gosh. out with Indiana, and I felt a little bad that I got you so drunk. Because <laughs> my amount of wine that I drink and other people's amount of wine is very different. <laughs> yeah. But you were driving, so you were like, no, you should drink more. And I was like, oh, I know. No. I felt like I was a bad date or something. I'm just like, you should drink more. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you roofie her? What? <laughs> I was just getting her drunk so I could like take advantage. I don't know. I just yeah. felt like I was just, like a bad influence. <laughs> 
Uh, I would love to drink. I'm not. I'm not allowed to these days, but someday, I believe. I'll, I got. I got some um, gourd ale from Trader Joe's, and hope that eventually I'll be able to yeah. have at it. Yeah. Oh, um, everyone asks me what I'm drinking all the time, so I figured I'd share. This is. Uh, it's a. It's a vino nobile de Montepulciano. Uh, it, it's. This one I got a good deal on because this was only like, uh, I think it was like $22. So that's like a good deal because it's usually very expensive. So I recommend, but um, it's a wine I always like. It's a uh, Southern Italian. It's like kind of a Sangiovese, but it's like, it's beautiful. It's just always beautiful tasting. Everyone always asks what I'm drinking. So I'm going to share. I, 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 I have no idea what that kind of wine is, but it sounded <laughs> yeah. fancy. It looks it sounded very so fancy, I yes. Trust, I would trust you. Anything you told me I should drink, I would believe. I believe that wine is a red. It's very drinkable, which is the problem, <laughs> because I drank two thirds of the bottle. Yeah. Leanna, I believe it was a red. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very deep colored wine. If it's, <laughs> it's a very dark rosé. It's a very old white wine. <laughs> it's like vinegar. Oh no. Yeah. I'm, I'm I... drinking um, O, which is French for water. Nice. It's nice. Oh, I thought it's we fresh. were going with like. I H think I had a really low of oxygen and being like, I'm not drinking because I'm just having oxygen. Oh. Well, no, I'm having actual water, but. <laughs> I'm gonna drink as much as I want because I'm gonna make my boyfriend take care of me. Anyone who saw my Dracula yeah. video knows, like he got me pizza last time, boyfriend of the <laughs> year. I was so drunk. I was like, Gregory, I need pizza. And he's like, I'm getting it. And there's this like indie pizza place by our place. And it's called Pizza Source Rex, which is the best name for a pizza restaurant that ever existed to order me Pizza Source. And I was like, <gasps> So um, I'm going to drink as much as I want, and then I'm pretty sure I can bamboozle him again and getting me food. <laughs> nice. so I'm having a great time. Just alone in my house on Halloween. Ooh, Ooh wow. Nice. Beth is drinking a Game of Thrones special release called Mother of Dragons. That sounds amazing. I have two Game of Thrones whiskeys. You have what? Two Game of Thrones whiskeys. Oh, nice. One of them is Johnny Walker, but it's White Walker, and it turns like the bottle turns blue when you put it in the freezer. Oh, cool! Neat. I, I appreciate a gimmick. Yeah, it's not yeah. very good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I do have course. a Scott. I have the but it's House Star Scott. And that's really good. Anyway, um, any other thoughts about the book? I think we talked about a lot of stuff. We haven't really talked about the racism aspect. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, because, there's another heavy part another that heavy we've not subject, gotten into. And I think we should touch on it because it is important. And yeah. then we can move yeah. on to other fun vampire activities. Okay. Oh, do we have activities? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, now. I, I don't, I don't plan anything. I am a hot mess express all the time. I didn't even know my costume until like five o'clock uh, my time. So like an hour before this started. <laughs> Great. That's how I live my life. On the seat of my pants. Yeah, I think, I mean, I thought the race stuff was handled really well. I, mm -hmm. I think it was interesting because the whole thing, right, is children are going, <clears throat> like, bad things are happening to children. Yes. But most of these white suburban moms don't care because it's black children in that neighborhood over there that's not mm -hmm. part of our neighborhood and it doesn't affect us so why should we care and i mean i think that is kind of on point with how things can frequently happen or did especially at that time mm -hmm. um it still happened that way a lot of times yeah i mean the also whole white, i mean white, i was gonna say it handled white, the, yeah the the layperson aspect of it which you just what you just addressed quite well yeah. but also addressed the, the institutional part of it which was the police ignoring yeah. it until yeah, in the same way, well, that's how, in fact, when the character says, you know, like, well, that's just what black people do. And that's what they think because they leave town, they're on drugs, they're poor. Like, this is just what happens. You yeah, just, they mentioned, yeah, like, yeah, like, we'll miss times too. like, oh, the police will be here in like three minutes. And they're like in the, in the, in the, you know, the black area of town. And they're like, please will be here when they be here. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like a lot yeah. of just like subtle things. Yeah. But part of what I like, though, was that, yes, like, ultimately, what happens is when these there's white... Cat, white I'm sorry, there's a cat. Are, <laughs> yes, there's there's cats. They're, I'm they're sorry, I'm a good time. a cat, and I was very excited. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Hello, cat. Um, <laughs> these nice white ladies, they do 
want like they want to think of themselves as people who care about black mm-hmm. children or about children in general. And yeah. I think that's part of what is so great about the way this book is executed is yeah. that it's not like these callous, just like completely unfeeling characters who are like, well, wow, like it's not a caricature of what racism is. It's showing that like when your back is against the wall and you actually have to make a hard choice that might cost you something, you're not choosing to do the like yeah. ethically right thing. And yeah. I think the whole like what happens to Grace bit shows that like there could be a real cost. Um so I don't know. I thought I really appreciated that it was very nuanced and not just like kind of a caricature of what racism, how it plays out in the world. Like I felt like it, it was a very yeah. real portrayal of that. Yeah. I mean, to, over the top and like, look how racist this is. It was just like yeah. it's very subtle and like how it's in your everyday life. You don't I even mean, yeah. it. forgive the yeah. expression, but it wasn't black and white about any of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was like, like Patricia really wants to wants to do the right thing, but when it really is going to cost her something, and it was going to cost her a lot, she just can't do it. She's yeah. just not strong enough to do it. But I mean, yeah. there's also, um, I mean, so like, I feel like it handled it well, where like Patricia was like on that cusp there, where like she was like literally hospitalized with like having c- tried to commit suicide or almost committing suicide. And like at that point, you don't have agency anymore. It's taken away from you because people don't believe you because you're a mental case now. And so like yeah. how that also like she's no longer able to do anything because of how people treat you. Like that's a whole different piece of things. Like they treat you different if you're black. They treat you different if you think if they think that you have a mental problem. They treat yes. you different if you're a woman. They treat you different if you're a kid. Like just all the ways that the society labels you either, you know, because of your race, your gender, your age, your mental state, all these things take agency away from you. Yeah. Well, and I love Jashana's point, which I thought was very deftly done, is that the, at the end, it's still a Black woman who is saving these white women. Like, even yeah. at the end, when these white women get, like, some <laughs> modicum of redemption, mm-hmm. it's very a very complicated redemption, because yeah. really, it's still a Black woman who's, like, doing a lot of the dirty work. They yeah. were a lighter shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I think to what you were saying, Leanna, too, about the um, structural piece of it, it makes me think of, I haven't read them, but I know um, <clears throat> some of the books by Tiffany G. Jackson, like allegedly, I think, and like a couple of her books are about, oh, no, um, not that one. The one, the one with, with the red, red cover. cover. Yes. yes. What but is it, that yeah. called? I forget. <laughs> I can't think of it right now. Someone in the comments might know, but it's yeah. about how when black teens go missing or black kids go missing, you know, there's not the same level of attention to it in the news. People don't care. People yeah. don't go looking for them versus when it's white children. And I think that's part of what you're seeing play out mm-hmm. here and the, like the police response and the general community response. And um, yeah, and I thought it was, it was interesting and complicated. I, I do think, you know, there were, I think there were people who felt like this book was racist in its depictions because of the, like the stuff about the black woman being the one who's saving at the end. I thought it was intentional. Like was kind of how I read it. Like it, all of the, all of it felt like intentional to me as a way of like making a point, but, um, but I have seen that comment also. Yeah. Monday's not coming. Thank Thank you. you, Caitlin's bookshelf. That's the one. Yeah. Boom. I'm a good moderator. Look at me putting comments up. <laughs> good job. I'm trying my best. I'm I'm a little drunk, but you know you're what? Doing, I think you're you're doing. I'm aces. living my best life. I'm a radical yeah. '90s vampire. Yo. Yo. <laughs> By the way, my hat says Trollop. Is <laughs> an Anthony Trollop? What? No, it doesn't have an Anthony Trollop. Yeah. Have you just misspelled it? It was just a misprint. Uh, no, I got it from the rip bodice. Oh, I can't get my. I was wearing my rip bodice sweatshirt today. I everybody, if you want to support their um, Christmas uh, bonus fund for the rip bodice, they have these great this great merch that says "Stay Home and Read one. a Romance Novel." I did too, and I love it. It's so cute. So yeah, 
And they have like all different, they have um, male, male, female, female, (laughs) male, female, different races. They, they are very inclusive. And by the way, for those of you who are not in California, although I think a lot of people know about the Ripped Bodice, it is a romance only bookstore in the Los Angeles area of California. And uh, the ladies who own it, Bee and Leah are adorable and wonderful (laughs) and they do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And they ship. They ship, um, I don't know, internationally, but definitely across the U.S. And I've always had very good shipping times with them. So if you need to do holiday shopping, recommend. And they do a blind date with the book packages, which is fun. They do. They do. They do care. You sent me one, Mara. I I sent a couple to Bethany. She got some exciting. (laughs) She got some Rebecca Weatherspoon. It was good stuff. With vampires. vampires. Yeah. Lesbian vampires. (laughs) Yeah. Rebecca Weatherspoon used to work at the Rip Bodice. So that's how I got my book signed by her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she's worked there. There's a, um, I read a romance novella recently (laughs) called Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend by Lucy Eden. And it is set not. A, like it's not called the Rip Bodice, but it's the Rip Bodice, and like it's a meet cute at a rip, at the Rip Bodice. It's very, oh, it's very. Oh, that's fun. That's great. Oh, I recommend it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lucy cool. Eden's great in general. Recommend. So, are there any final thoughts about Southern Book Club? Because after this, we're just going to talk about vampires and have a good time, and this is when cool. the party starts. Yeah. It's really good, I think. It is a heavy read, and I think if you don't know the content warnings going in, like, I'm actually, like, honestly, sorry. Like, I feel like I failed you, Amanda. I feel like somebody should have, like, (laughs) really, because it's, like, I think you should know what you're getting into with this book, because it's, it's, like, child abuse. It's, like, we were discussing, like, an overt graphic Mm -hmm. description of sexual assault, Mm -hmm. um, intimate partner violence. Like, it's a, there's, and then just, like, gross horror stuff. Yeah. Like icky, whatever. So like know that, but I think mm-hmm. it's a really worthwhile read if those are things you know going in and yeah. you can deal so with. I think um, it's great. Really well written and I enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. I had to get star off because I just felt that was gratuitous, but yeah. there's different opinions on it and I'm not saying anything's mm-hmm. un- like less I valid than my opinion, but you know. So I gave it I four stars. Would be curious I enjoyed about- it. I mean, I know a man wrote it, but I'd be really curious. I haven't seen any man's opinion. Like, I haven't seen any book reviewer that's a male discuss this Mm. book, and I'd be curious Mm. to see. That would be interesting. Yeah. Okay, I want to talk about the book design because I kind of love it. Do you guys notice this? Yeah, it's in the library. Okay, Okay, yeah, the cover itself is beautiful, I think. It has blood coming out of really nice. As yeah. you finally know, which Diana was, yeah, it was blew her mind right. last night. But I love it. It's like Town of Mount Pleasant Public Library, South Carolina. Yeah. Like I just, I love it when there's like little details like that. And then the end of the book has like the yes, flyer, I was say. the Y2K flyer. I was like, oh my gosh, guys! Like a happy holidays this, book like, club thing. And like it has Microsoft like the word. Microsoft Word. Yes, word yes. On. I love it. Yes. It's so great. Like the the design of this was so good. Yeah, it was so cute. Yeah, into those '90s vibes, and I was like, also thumbs up to Grady Hendrick's uh, author picture. I think it's (laughs) excellent. (laughs) There's a lot of style going on here. There is, yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, he's a very he's a very dapper gentleman. That was the vibe I got from him when he was when he was on the panel. Yeah, yeah. But thumbs up, hard read, but good. Absolutely, it's definitely difficult at points, but. Good overall. I give four stars. I couldn't give it five because I was still I'm still disturbed by that till to this day. And it's been like three weeks since I read this book. And I I'm keep I, I, it, it. it's it's on my 2020 favorites shelf. So nice. <laughs> I gave it four and a half, which is the favorite of the year for me. Yeah. Same favorite of the year is yeah. What about you, Leanna? Yeah. Blade, I'm sorry. Who's Leanna? Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, sorry, right Blade. Now. My bad. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, what would, I guess that would be interesting. Like, what would our characters think of this book? I don't think Blade would read it. He needs not got time. <laughs> well, Blade um, I think in the 70s. He would have been around in the 90s. What if he got, what if he was, like, healing from an injury or something, right? Like, laid think- up. Blade would have been there hunting that vampire. He would be like, you bitches, we need to hunt this guy. And he would have been there hunting. 
Especially when all the kids that were getting eaten were black kids. Like, Blade would have been there. Hey, okay. Blade, Blade doesn't Word. have time for that. Uh, the Arginos would just be pissed that this is yet another perpetuation of the myth of vampires as opposed to the fact that they are, like, scientifically vampires. Like, this is, like, a magic-y version of it. And they're, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing magical yeah. about our vampirism. It's nanobots that the Atlanteans implanted in our blood. Like, I don't know. What, I don't know what's so mysterious about that. Wait, you know? that's okay. That's very similar to another series. Oh no, by Carolyn Sparks. Have you read it? I tried and I couldn't get into it. I wouldn't either. I did. I got rid okay. of them all because, like, they feel very yeah. dated and like a. Okay, here's the deal. Like, Carolyn Sparks, I'm sure she means well, but, like, she's an older white lady trying to write contemporary black voices, and she's not doing it well. And it's just, like, it got to a point where I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> you're trying, but you're not doing well. And, like, I couldn't deal with it anymore. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. no. So, like, the early Arjuno books, I do think, feel a little dated because they're from the early aughts. Like, they have a little bit of that vibe. But they're very campy and, like, self-aware. I want to read them. So, I, well, you love the Highland books, which, by the way, I read Highland Treasure, and it's the best one. I no, it's not. Okay, it's not quite as good as Sadie's, but it's it's so good. I just I read it last weekend because I deserve good things in my life. And also, the man titty on that cover is excellent. But... um. Rory's a doctor. Like, why would he be that rich? Yes, it's so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's really, really good. But anyway, you you anyway. already like Lindsay Sands, so like you know what she's serving. So like, mm -hmm. imagine that. But then she's like, "Look at these dumb vampires." <laughs> it's fun. Love it. Yeah, it's my favorite. I I love them. They're my favorite vampires. Every book yeah. is the same, but it's okay. It's like opening a bag of it's, mini Snickers. Yes. Every Snickers exactly. you eat is the same, but it's you okay. Know what you're getting. Okay. Yeah. I just like Snickers. That's how yeah. I just thought it. I'm going to tell you, I think Highland Treasure objectively is the best book I've ever read from her. Like in terms of its objective quality, it's it's a step up. It's good. Yeah. I'm very excited. Okay. I, I pre-ordered it, but I don't I don't have it yet. I'm going to order order the hardback, I think. Avon Books won't won't fuck with me. Like they are they don't answer any of my emails when I like respond I say like I I They're, have like words and I would like to say them about your books. Could you send me a book and they go no. Yeah, they're they're elusive. Um we like recently started finally. But like yeah. not Avon. Sorry. This is I have drank a lot of wine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so Vampires. Bethany, you put out a video today and I did not watch it yet. I'll admit because I'm a bad friend, but um okay. watch a lot of different movies and I saw interview of the vampire. I mean interview of the vampire. What did you think of it? Tell to tell of, the uh, of interview with a vampire? Mm -hmm. It was interesting. It was not what I was expecting. Um is that so not the most of... insane Tom Cruise performance you have ever seen? <laughs> yeah. It, I mean it's like interesting, right? It's like pre- Scientology. But it's just like he's no, it's not. That's not true. It's, not? it's pre really? you. It's pre you knowing about his Scientology. But oh wow, okay. I just feel like he's oh. always Mr. Macho, Mr. Manly, and he's so foppish and so feminine. And I, yeah, he, yes. I love it. I he's thought that was so interesting, right? Having like these three, the, like three of the big heartthrobs of the time as these very homoerotic characters. Like it was. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting the movie. homoeroticism I, of that movie yeah. is. And Kristen Dunst, yeah. like, really to play a mature woman inside the body mm -hmm. of a child. I was like, she serves it. Like, she like steals that movie. I feel like in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and she's like, what eight? I don't know. She's like twelve, but either yeah. way, yeah. I Whatever think, age she was, she's doing a good job. So it's funny in the blog. I have more like my like late night immediately after watching it with my husband our reactions and then my next day after thinking about it and watching videos about it reaction and initially i was like i don't know if i'll watch that again that was interesting <laughs> like i don't know and then the next day i was like okay i can see like why this would be iconic but also i would love to see somebody like pull apart the racism and misogyny in it because like there's a lot there's a lot mm -hmm. of like weird stuff there's like there's the whole scene where he's a he's a slave owner and they have this one his slave he owns who comes in and he almost kills her and she's like no be the master we had and i'm like this really feels like it's romanticizing slavery i that's know thing. that's the thing like watching this for the first time in 2020 was interesting and then yeah. 
Um, you know, like all the women are victims. There's a lot of violence against women. All the people of color are victims. And I was like, wow, we're centering white male narratives here. Yay. <laughs> But like, yeah. it's really like, purposes, you know, like it's very stylish. It's interesting. And, like, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, a good yeah, picture, right. but like, there's problems. Yeah. So it was interesting it's watching time. it now. Yeah, it's very much a thing of its time. It it's reads also a lot of like about that. So if you're yeah, adapting, yeah, yeah, book, yeah. Yeah. The book. No, well, I get book, it. But look, I think look, the book is of its time. Like, I, yeah. and Anne Rice, I think, is a complicated figure. Yeah. But so that's why I would say like the issue is not with the movie, the issue is with the choice to adapt that book and the book yeah. is the book. I mean, I think it's like part of it, right, is watching it for the first time now. Like it is very it very much feels like a product of its time. And I mean a lot of it feels too like 90s ideas about queerness and homosexuality, like things that like I don't think it would be made or written the same way today. So it was interesting. It made me I couldn't find something like this, but it made me want to watch a video where somebody like digs into all the details of it and like pulls apart anything problematic and nobody's done that. And I was like, Mari, Snark Squad should take an interview with the vampire. <laughs> Ellis, <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. So I don't know, it was, um, but yeah, I like, I, I had mixed feelings about it. It was, I, I didn't, it wasn't what I expected. I also but. thoroughly enjoy the present day part with Brad Pitt and Christian Slater. The interview part, yeah, about yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the acting was really, yeah, like a lot of the acting was really good, and it feels like I can see why it became such an iconic thing for sure. Like it's, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it interesting. And just yeah. um, stylistically, like the set design, the costume design, the way it's shot, mm -hmm. it's just like yeah, really, the costumes are the best part of that movie. Yeah, for me. great with it, Yeah. Costumes, every set, like every scene they're in, every single thing in the room with them, everything mm -hmm. like, is lush. And when you're in the South in New Orleans, you can feel the humidity in the air. It looks like a swamp. And you can like, I feel like I'm sweating watching it. Like, it's just so filled with stuff. Anyway, so, I really like that movie. <laughs> speaking of this movie and this world, have y'all seen Queen of the Damned? Because I unironically like it. I know it's a terrible movie, but I still it's love Aaliyah, it. It's Aaliyah, right? Yeah. It was I the mean, last for that reason alone, it's Ikea. Who died or while in production ironic. of the film. So they had to finish it with a stunt <clears throat> double. Just like the crow. Wow. But it's so terrible that it's amazing. And like, I, like I have made friends over love with this movie. Like, um, <laughs> like my friend Catherine, we met at the gym and one day we just started talking. She, this movie came up in conversation. I don't remember how, but she's like, oh my gosh, I love it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it too. Are we best friends? And then like we were. So like <laughs> it brings people together. That's how I feel about Sleepy Hollow with some of my friends. Sleepy Hollow and <laughs> Twister were both movies like that. Of oh, like, I liked Sleepy we Hollow. We love these movies unironically and wholeheartedly. Okay, you know what movie I feel that way about? <laughs> Is The Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> what, a, what a pull! <laughs> I love it so much. It was like my favorite movie for so many years, and I know it's like a B movie, side, but I just love the world building. Yeah, I best. love the lines and like Vin Diesel being like, "Yes, I'm gonna kill you with my teacup." It's like it's so good. It's got like it. great like zingers. I love yeah, it so they much. They put effort into it. It's just still <laughs> ridiculous, but they put effort in. It's, it's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> have any of you seen Queen of the Damned? Am I the only one? You're the only one. Oh no! Oh, oh my gosh! I'm we're sorry. gonna like we're gonna watch. I'm gonna make you watch this. Like that's gonna happen because it's I so watched bad and interview good. with a vampire after Leanna was like, "You have to watch it." So I I did. Queen of the Damned. It's <laughs> it's terrible. It's so bad, but it reads like a romance novel, like a paranormal romance. If you read a paranormal romance in the past, oh, I love a paranormal romance. That. That it really fun. like uh, that, but I'd be I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. That sounds like fun. It's really. Fun. I remember seeing the it's cover bad, in the video way. store and like consistently not picking it. Oh, but I, I don't know it. why, but like I very distinctly remember seeing it in Blockbuster. And I feel like, like there's oh, a higher oh, likelihood so. of my enjoying the Chronicles of Riddick than the Queen of the Damned. I agree. I would agree with that point. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like, I, mean, you know, I, think you, I, I feel like you would appreciate Chronicles of Riddick actually. Probably. Like if you can get past the like bad CGI from way back in the day, like it, I think you would appreciate it. <laughs> I just I mean, love, it's such a random pick for you. Like, I just, if I had had, like, 50 guesses as to what movie you were going to name, I just wouldn't, like, I wouldn't have gotten there. So. Look, I don't know. I saw it, I saw it in theaters when I was a teenager, and I was just, like, obsessed. I don't know. I love it. Things. Yeah, it's great. Like, if you're um, a teenager, I understand the obsession. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you watch it for the first time now in 2020 yeah. as an adult, like, I think, yeah. So, oh, yeah, time, yeah. I think we're all in our 30s, so it's just, like, yeah. So yeah. you're saying that if it becomes my favorite movie, you won't be my friend anymore? I'll, I'll be, be your, your friend, friend but I'll, like, I'll, I'll have thoughts about you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I if can, I can get I can past the fact that you friend. like pineapple on your pizza. Say, I, I do, like too. So. I'm terrible. What? I like pineapple on my pizza. What? I, oh. My favorite, it's actually my, fa oh my, my favorite pizza is, a, is extra cheese, pineapple, garlic and onion that's like Mara, my ideal we are oh, best friends no. right now no yes. oh my gosh is this a, like vegetarian hawaiian it's i don't like, know why i don't want I mean, the ham but... is the best yeah combo. i love it i don't it. like so good. hot fruit with the savory oh. no mm -mm. Well, nope. did you, you know, know what at mr gaddy's did you not enjoy an, an apple cinnamon pizza growing up i never yeah, had that. that's dessert pizza. that's not it's savory that's like you can have like a, sweet things in your savory. Have you not watched Top Chef? Like you can, uh, I know you can. can. Have, I we have, don't like we have a very like cultured palate. Pineapple. You know what? I just don't like hot pineapple. I think that's what it is. Like that's, I don't. That's okay. I, I, you don't, I don't like, like a pineapple hot. upside down cake? Not particularly. No. You know what? Okay. I don't like hot pineapple. Pineapple. Yeah. I should okay. live your truth. <laughs> I am so allergic to pineapple. I should. Why are you eating it on your pizza? My niece is allergic to pineapple too. It like fucks her stomach up. Well, it, oh, yeah. it'll make my mouth itch. No, I'm I've so good. I've this before on my channel, but like when I say I have allergies, like I mean like I have to go to the doctor and get shots for it. Like I have oh, yeah. allergies. And oh, like I'm allergic to treat. So you just like pop some Benadryl before you have your pizza? It doesn't like, help. What? It doesn't help. I just don't get it anymore. But like it, I love it. Uh -huh. I do too. That's a so you're over, you're overruled here, Bethany. But the next time we're yeah, all in I, person, we're getting okay, pineapple so. on our pizza and we're going to force feed it to you and we're going to laugh. Yeah, I like, I, I really like that's fine, so, really. pizzas. So like bell pepper, pepperoni, and mushrooms. Oh, no. I hate bell peppers. I'm sorry. I just of hate it. Of those three ingredients, pepperoni is the only one I would choose. I would eat it, the other two, if they were given to me, but I wouldn't Mara, choose it. Yeah, I really like it. I don't think this is a vegetarian, but Mara, like, we are agreeing about a lot of foods right now. Like, I'm very excited. Yeah. We should have dinner. Well, yeah, okay. We'll just have a vegetarian <laughs> feast. It'll be great. Next time I come to I mean, your area. I love it. Yes, we'll have a vegetarian feast. I'll make you, um like, the uh, one of my go-tos for vegetarians is Vietnamese wraps. Like, make your own. Mm. So, like, I make, like, a buffet of fixins, and then you can, like, make your own spring rolls. It's fun. I will I will wrap the shit out of spring rolls. I'm very excited. Yeah, you get some, like, tofu if, for you. Then. If you guys come visit me, we can go get vegan hamburgers and donuts. If we come to visit you, we're <laughs> going to, like, the food capital of... Not, maybe not the world, but I, the I U.S. Mean, so, like, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we can have so many things. Well, that's true. No, but I'm just saying, like, there's this really great fancy donut place, and they just started carrying vegan donuts. Like, right now, they have a pumpkin spice mm. latte vegan donut that's delicious. Ooh. There's a that's place nice. in Los Angeles. It's called Donut Friend, and it's a punk rock donut <laughs> shop, but they're, they're vegan. So, like, Leanna, I want to, but Leanna, Leanna yeah. doesn't eat gluten. So it's like, I don't like sweets. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't so like sweets. Like, I'm kind of monster. If Bethany comes to visit me, I'll take her to get hot chicken because that's like the Nashville thing. I I'm sorry, as opposed to cold chicken? chicken. I hot, love spicy like spicy chicken. chicken. It's like, I love it. I got big spicy chicken. <laughs> you know, hard chicken over here, oh, too. Like, the, like impossible chicken. <laughs> <laughs> impossible hot chicken. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. I love the spice. It yeah, good. it's mostly the seasoning. So you could probably just like take that seasoning and put it on whatever, yeah. like tofu or, like, yeah. My like ability to eat chili peppers is like bananas because it doesn't taste spicy to me anymore. So like I'll make ramen with like chili oil and like all the spicy stuff. 
And I'm like, mm, so good. I'll make it to my boyfriend. And then I turn around and his face is just, he's sweating and he's red. And I'm like, oh no, what have I done to you? Because it doesn't oh. spicy to me. I don't know what spicy is anymore. Oh no, I don't win. I like ramen, man. That makes me think. There's this really good ramen place near us that does like miso ramen with like the salted egg. It's so good. Mm, like my favorite ramen. part. Vegan ramen place today. Mm. There is a vegan ramen place in Los Angeles. Ramen dude. Nice. There's one by my house too. Yeah, there's a ramen place near me. I'm not. I should see if they're still alive in the plague. <laughs> now we're apparently making people in the comments hungry. It's dinner <laughs> time. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're oh, okay. That so that fancy thing. that fancy donut place because we now will like go on Saturdays. Today they had a weekend special that was delicious. It was a churro donut with chocolate tequila dipping sauce, and it was great. Chocolate tequila. I don't know that I know what that would taste like. I don't. It I tasted don't like tequila. chocolate and tequila, and it was very good. <laughs> like, what is is the tequila know. just like? So it's like there's some tequila mixed into the dipping sauce. It's like Does a it chocolate. just taste like alcohol. Yeah, it like, tastes I, like I guess alcoholic I think chocolate. Of tequila. Yeah. Okay. Like I guess I should think of like tequila being a distinct, like, like if you told me something was vodka mm -hmm. flavored, I would just be like, so that's just alcohol. I, I don't know. Yeah. I suppose no, like, whis like, like whiskey flavored right, right, something, right, I have right. more of like an idea of what that is. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I mean, tequila is like has a specific flavor also. But yeah. Anyway, they do I'm, like I'm collabs. Like they'll do like weekend specials where they collab with different people. So this one was with like a tequila maker. And then like mm. last weekend they had an apple pie donut with like a whiskey sauce on it with made with the special whiskey. So they'll do anyway, if anybody goes to New York City, it's called the Donut Project and it's like great if you want like fancy high end donuts. So <laughs> nice. Well if and when the plague lifts and we can if visit. and when things like yeah exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's the idea like, like a fancy thing. The idea of traveling right now is just so beyond like my like oh my even gosh, realm yeah. of comprehension <laughs> that I'm like, I can't even imagine what that will be like. <laughs> oh, One <something>. day. <laughs> I didn't want to go places and I can't go anywhere. I know. Yeah. Pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Just need that vaccine. Anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, happy vampire things. <laughs> vampire things. It's Halloween, guys. Other, other favorite oh, vampire okay. shout outs. I'm trying to think of other vampire. I do like yeah. a Suki Stackhouse. Uh, for have you some read the campy... book? I have. I've read, I've read like I, a, I, 12 of them. I got the download on when, when it got bad. So I didn't read like two or three of them. And then yeah, I right. picked up and read the last one. It mm. got bad around 11 or 12 because they had like four yeah. pages of her antiquing. And I was like, why am I reading? I, yeah, I skipped so that. I did, I did some like oh internet research about like, when, <laughs> when does it get bad? And like, I figured that out. And so I have a uh -huh. wonderful memory of that series. Cause I just skipped those couple of <laughs> books and read the back half of the last book. So I knew how it ended. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I, I, I was ride or die with it for a while. Like true blood was like a great show too. Until it got weird. And then it was just like, Oh no. I never Jump saw the, the show. show. I Jump didn't either. Heart. Wasn't good anymore. I've been watching, rewatching, and then hopefully we'll actually continue with the Vampire Diaries, and I am just loving it. Like it's is so. Is it like great. is it like CW drama but with vampires? Yes. Yes. Okay, I could get into that. I think it's so good. Like it's super melodramatic and silly and over the top, but it's like really fun. So it's like if I need something funny and silly, it's great. Leanna, yeah, have so. you tried it? Because I know you like. It's Robert. on Netflix. Have you tried what? Have you tried the Vampire Diaries? So I know you like Riverdale. Well, I watched um, like when it was first airing. I watched like it consistently, and then I stopped at like season four. Mm -hmm. That's like more seasons than I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting yeah. like two episodes, and you're like, oh, so you'll be really seasons. shocked when you hear why I started watching it because when I saw like TV promos for it, I was like, like dumb as shit. And then I started watching it because my brother randomly texted me and was like, you know, it's actually kind of good. Vampire Diaries. <laughs> I was like, hot tip. Noted. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it is. It's ridiculous, but it's so fun. And it's also really funny, like, to watching it now and, like, seeing 
because it's been a while now there's like <clears throat> nine seasons or whatever and it ended a while back and so with the time difference like it's kind of funny too seeing like things of that time watching it so i'm enjoying it yeah at one I point like, i had I'm one of the books and i was like i should read this book and i was like i'm never gonna read this book i gave up on yeah. it i never read I the book probably fair but, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I love the drama. It's so funny to me too, like watching how they will like, you can tell they're pivoting a character to be somebody who's now gonna be more sympathetic, even though they did really horrible things in the past. And it's so fun to watch like that. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds very spooky stack house. <laughs> it's very fun. <laughs> yeah. I like, um, Janine Frost has a series of vampire novels yes. that I enjoy. Yes, and I really like the spin. Have you read the spinoff ones, Amanda? I haven't yet, but I, I okay. own a couple of them. I haven't read them yet. I prefer the um, Vlad quad of books over the, even the original series because it's actual Dracula who is now a, a romance novel hero, and it's wonderful. <laughs> I just read Dracula for the first time, and it was a journey. I put yeah, out a video. I, I like, haven't seen it yet, but like, it's a yeah, lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tuck in with that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I just drank so much. I think I cried over how much I love bread at one point, and I called Van Helsing Battle Santa because he's like Battle Santa. Like he's so like nice and like loving. He's like, you guys are my children. I love you. And then he's just like, let's decapitate corpses together. Like he's just Battle Santa. You and know who's actually Battle Santa is like the pop up for Blade. That dude. What what dude? The old dude who's like the guy that gives oh, him his weapon. Oh, I don't know if he's Santa because he's not so. He's warm got a big out. white beard and white hair, and he just shows up. Ho ho ho! Here's your weapons. I rescued you. You're welcome, Blade. <laughs> I would say he's like <laughs> Battle Hobo Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. He's not jolly enough to be Santa, but like Jim Van Helsing is jolly at points. And I'm just like, okay, Battle Santa, like I'm I'm feeling you. I enjoy the ex the meta experience of being in 2020 reading the start of what is now our vampire lore. Like I love at the beginning when he's going to Transylvania and he's reading his letter and it's like, looking forward to seeing you, XOXO Count Dracula. It's just like <laughs> you as the reader are just sitting there like, oh, oh honey. Oh, oh honey, no. no. Like this is not gonna go well. <laughs> yeah. Um Dracula was an experience. <laughs> I got very drunk while reading it. It was it was a fiasco or experience, depending on how you look at it. But you know what? I read it. I finished it. I'm I'm proud of that fact. I have yeah, not read it. I read that, one. that last Halloween, so it's a good good time of year to do it. I DNF'd it. It's very bad. <laughs> I, I not really fun. liked it. But I think it's very polarizing. I think people either really like it or really don't. I really liked it. When Lucy started going off about how we don't deserve men because they're so great and we're so awful, I was like, fuck you. And I closed the book. I just, yeah. it made me laugh. Like all of that stuff, I think because I was just in a very meta place with it, it just made me laugh. I was like, okay, <laughs> go off, Brom. Did anyone else want Quincy and Arthur to be secret boyfriends? Because I was like full shipping them. The cowboy and the English count. Like I wanted them to be boyfriends. I mean, I so didn't, hard. but like once you said it, I was like, I'm sure there is fan fiction for that. So I want them to be boyfriends. Like, you can't tell me nothing. They're secret boyfriends. Yeah. They're secret Good boyfriends. Day, three. You can, if it's not there, you can write it. I mean, look, there were queer people back then. There were. And they That's hung out a lot. Around. Like, a lot. Like, why would they be hanging out with each other unless they were fucking? Like, they were, they were totally queer fucking. boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, no no arguments here. I think that's text. I don't even think yeah. it's subtext. I think that's just text. It's just how they were. Yeah. I feel like in general, classics are so polarizing because a lot of people just think they're super boring or don't like something or other about them. So, like, yeah. I loved Frankenstein, and so many people are like, "It's so boring. I hated it." And I'm like, "No, it's not. It's so good." But 
I like oh, it, yeah. but again, I, I think I also had a meta experience with it of like, okay, mm -hmm. you have this idea about what Frankenstein is and then you read mm -hmm. the original text and it's like, like I enjoy anything that, yeah. I enjoy that, that yeah. dance between the text, the author and the reader. That's something I like. That's fair. I didn't have, I think when I first read it, I didn't have a lot of ideas about it actually. I mean, kind of like vaguely, but I didn't really, I hadn't really seen a lot of things. I read it in high Did school. Did you not grow up watching Young Frankenstein? Conservative parents watch Young oh, Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Oh, I love that movie. I can, in fact, I don't think I've even seen it whole... now all the way through. I've seen parts. I've seen <sighs> chunks, that, large chunks of it, but I don't think I've even seen it all the way through at this point. My mom gets like yeah. happier than a five-year-old with candy when you mention Young Frankenstein. She's like, "Oh, are we watching that?" Same. <laughs> I loved it. It was one like, like an early movie I saw. Like I saw a lot of '80s movies like when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, I was in a speech class, and we had to give a speech about something. And I would, I like, I did a whole speech about Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, in seventh grade, and I was like, wow. no one is picking up what I'm putting down. Like I was so into that movie, and I was trying to convince people to watch it. Yeah, it's the same thing with Frankenstein. Like I was so into that movie, and I couldn't convince anyone to watch it when I was a kid. So good. That's so funny. Ooh, yeah, so funny. Whereas, like I had the experience of like. My mom found out my dad had let us watch Grease when we were teenagers and was like, what? <laughs> but the ending, she is like, thinks it's okay to turn into this other kind of person. Yeah, so I, like, that, was, that was my... <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch Roger Rabbit because Jessica Rabbit's a bad role model. <laughs> I didn't have I went to Toontown for it. years. I had no idea Toontown was based on Roger Rabbit. And then at like the ripe old age of 16, I went to Toontown. I was like, this whole place is based on Roger Rabbit. I've seen the movie now. <laughs> wow. I remember the first time I watched, because I grew up watching Grease. The first time I saw it as maybe like a later teen or in my 20s and like actually processing like um, Grease Lightning, like what that song is about. Oh, like all, yeah, like, no. all the yeah, 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 I was yeah. like, I cannot believe my parents were just like, I, my parents were very yeah. laissez-faire. Like, I didn't really have restrictions on what I could or couldn't watch. Same. Um, and they didn't well, really, they, so I was just going around bebopping to Chris. <laughs> okay, I will, I will do the story. Because I've told you some stories of my childhood, which were just bananas. I had a bananas childhood. Because I didn't have a lot of parental supervision. <laughs> so, Grace. I was obsessed with it because it came out again. Like they did a re-release, but I was like fifth. Yes, yeah, that's how I got obsessed with it too. Yeah, we went and saw it in theaters. Yeah, I was so obsessed with it that like my school I was in, we did like an Olympics. And, like every like class got to pick a country, and we represented that country. And then we did like sports. It was like a crazy thing, and I was like. Oh my gosh, teacher, we should do Greece because then we could dress up like Greece. And like I convinced everybody to do it. And so we dress up like Greece, like the movie Greece, when we were representing the country Greece. Like Oh no. That so like, defeats the purpose of like the cultural like I know. <laughs> I know. I was a very persuasive child. Like <laughs> I was very confident in my opinions and I was like, listen, you've got to do this. It's like me when I'm drunk, but I'm very like, I have this opinion. I know it's right. Like I'm very <laughs> declarative. So, and then we did it. We did so many people wore poodle skirts in this like Olympics, like parade we had at school. Like so many people wore poodle skirts. Like I was like killing it as a child anyway. I think it was probably right no more like culturally inaccurate than all of you wearing togas. I mean, like, I know. I think some people yeah. wore togas too. Like, we were doing Greece and Greece because, like, we didn't like, want to like be completely terrible. Got but it. like, <laughs> I was very yeah. persuasive as a child. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just do like a crossover. You know, it's like Aristotle and John Travolta. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's how it was. That's how it was. You could just wear a toga with a John Travolta wig. Perfect. There you go. Done. <laughs> like, I've told you all this story before. Should I tell everybody? Okay, I'm going to tell everybody. So, as a child, like, I got into some shenanigans as a child. And one of them was in fourth grade. And my teacher 
was dating another teacher at my school and I happened to walk in on them at one time because he was the computer teacher and she was my fourth grade teacher. And I walked into the computer lab because I wanted to play Carmen San Diego. I wanted to go like on the computer and she was okay. sitting on his desk and he was like between her legs. They weren't having sex. They were just like touching. And I was like, can I play Carmen San Diego? Can I do some <laughs> Yahoo Ligans? Cause that was like the kid version of Yahoo at that time. And they're like, um, yes. And then I played my games and then I left and I didn't tell anybody about what I saw. Cause like I saw a compromising position and that whole school year, I got away with anything I wanted. Like I could talk people into anything because I kept their secrets. And then like they would have me passing notes between them because my teacher would be like, hey, take this, take this to the computer teacher. And I'd be like, okay. And I take it to the computer teacher and I didn't read it because I was like a trustworthy child. And then the computer teacher would give me notes and I'd take it back to my fourth grade teacher. I was like their go between because I like I was cool. That's so, like, so messed up. My childhood yeah. was insane. I did not have any supervision. <laughs> Like I knew what was going no. on. Like I wasn't stupid. Like I realized like, oh, like I know a secret and I can use it to my advantage. Like I was full Slytherin about it. Like I got away with anything. Like I talked a teacher into doing grease for grease. <laughs> Pro tip to any teachers watching you maybe don't use uh, children in your care as a part of your, uh, you know, dating yeah like, maybe you just you know what? I was although to be fair like back then texting was much less a thing that's like, true like, oh, yeah this is in the 90s like they didn't yeah. even have cell phones like yeah yeah no it's just like a thing so like you know what I I was killing it as a child like I knew when to keep my mouth shut about things and like I got away with a lot of stuff like I saw Bram Stoker's Dracula by Coppola like when I was like eight I shouldn't have seen it then. That's too young, but like no one was supervising me. I just was running wild. I feel like I saw The Shining when I was like nine or ten, but I don't think like I it was scary, but it didn't like traumatize me. I must have uh, I don't know. I must not have really understood fully what was going on. Much like Grease Lightning, I was just blissfully naive <laughs> to all the implications. This is what cards. I don't understand any of the implications. Yeah, we were allowed to watch PBS. Oh, you were not. It is. We were. That was the one channel oh. we were allowed to watch. I was gonna say like we didn't have cable, so we pretty much only had BBS. No, we so didn't. We like... didn't. Yeah, we didn't have cable either. But like, did you watch Ghost Rider? Yes. Okay, because yeah, that was I like my that. PBS that was so cool. jam. I love yeah. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider was so cool. They had a book series yeah. too, and then Wishbone. Wishbone. Oh, I love, yeah. Wishbone. I love Wishbone. Most of my knowledge of yeah. classics is still from Wishbone. <laughs> Yeah. I definitely like managed I think there was like one book at some point maybe in high school that I didn't read and I still like got all the stuff right because I had seen the wishbone <laughs> God bless wishbone <laughs> You know what it was really accurate oh. about? Tale of Two Cities which I fucking hate to this day I cannot stand to that movie but like that movie the book what am I doing? I'm drunk but like Tale of Two Cities, I hate that book. And then Wishbone did it and they did it very accurately. So if you want to know what happens in Tale of yep. Two Cities, go watch Wishbone. Go watch Wishbone. Wishbone is basically just like uh, eight year olds Cliff Notes. <laughs> yeah. It's like Cliff Notes and the classics for children. It's great. It was such a smart idea. And then like Magic School Bus and Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Was okay, iconic. you know what? We have. So actually we have a book that I loved. It was like my favorite from a rainbow reading rainbow episode. And so when we had kids, I like tracked it down and bought it. And my kids like it now too, which is, is fun. Yay. It's uh, the, oh, what is it? It's like, it's, it's the one, this one about this bunny who plays a superhero on TV. And it's like this behind the scenes look at like filmmaking or like making TV stuff. And like, it's funny. It's great. Right. I love it. For some reason, well. like, our PBS channel didn't come in very strongly wherever I was. So PBS always felt like a treat. Like, it wasn't it wasn't widely available. But it had several shows I very much enjoyed. Which also makes sense because even as an adult, I enjoy some, you know, Antiques Roadshow. So. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> With 
that show is like, oh my gosh, the tension. It's crack. I love it. Well, and especially the British it. version is so good because they will crush little old ladies' dreams. Like they'll come in and I they'll, know. you know, bring their allegedly like their grandmother's silver and then they'll be like, this is garbage. Like this is worth nothing. <laughs> This is worth negative amount of money, and they're like, oh. yeah, like it's worth more as like scrap than whatever it is right <laughs> now. You have the person who doesn't care about anything show up, and they're like, yeah, I found this teacup at a garage sale. Like, what's it worth? And they're like, eight thousand dollars, and they're like, oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> they're one of those. Like, it's not like there's no middle. <laughs> I really enjoy the moments where people think they have something, and then they find out it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you can tell they like actually spent some money on it, and yeah. then. Yeah. Anyway, all I have to say, I love I love me some antiques road show, so I, yeah. I enjoy PBS to this day. I remembered the name of that book for anyone. If anyone cares, maybe no one cares, but it's called The Bionic Bunny Show. Okay. So in case anybody wants to look it up, wants a chill day for people watching. Have you all Good. read The Nicula? Yeah, yes. I oh my gosh, your kids Benicula. would love The Nicula, I bet. The Nicula is really fun. It's so fun. Yeah. It's about he's a, a bunny. He's a vampire Dracula. bunny. It's very yeah, on topic. Of bunny. Bunny. There's a lot of. I feel like a vegetarian he around somewhere. He <laughs> like he's a vegetarian. The blood out of carrots. Like it's yeah. it's adorable and I love it. And I read it. This is fourth grade again. Oh my gosh, fourth grade was like a big year for me. So yeah. my teacher wanted to read Bunicula, and like, I still love Bunicula. This fourth grade teacher is the one who's passing notes to the computer teacher. Wow. And I think Benicula, there's like a whole series of them. Like I've only read the first one, but I think that there's there's multiple. Yeah, but it's like yeah, it's, a, it's a picture book, I believe. Well, it's a Did chapter book, but there's pictures Is in it. Is it chapter? It's okay, that, I was gonna say. Oh, I remember cool. the pictures, but yeah. But anyway, Bethany, when, whenever. You know, you get to the right age. Benicula is awesome. When Bethany gets I mean, to the right age, well, Benicula. when you, when you're one day, when you're, one day I'll get there. No, I don't know if you're ready for Benicula yet, <laughs> Bethany. But I think when you hit thirty-five, <laughs> you'll be I'm ready working. for it. <laughs> it's killing yeah, it. It's so yeah, good. Yeah. It's so good. Like your children know. Yeah. About them. No, I should look it up. Well, my because my six-year-old, he's get like his reading is going well. Well, you know what. He's also highly incentivized because we give him a dollar if he finishes a book, like a chapter book, and reads it by himself. And so, like his reading, Can I'm I like, man, we might need that? to like drop that. Yeah, I was gonna rate. say, I need that. <laughs> yeah. So, Leanna, Leanna, what's up? Blade, I'm sorry, what's up? <laughs> Hi. Hi. You said you want to get in on this. I think she meant on like the money. The, getting paid oh, to on read the, books. On getting paid. Oh, never mind. I was trying <laughs> to like include you in the conversation. So, like, remember when you were kids and you got like Pizza Hut? If you read books, you get like oh, Pizza yeah. Hut. Yeah. Or like the library summer reading challenge. I love yeah. those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the librarian at the local library, because there was a, a local just like city library that was across the street from our school. So they used to like have a partnership where we'd go over there for like story time. And the one of the librarians, her son was a ginger. So he dressed up as Tintin so that we could meet Tintin. And we were very excited to meet the real Tintin. Congratulations. <laughs> you think ginger just, power could be good? Yeah. I, I just remember being very excited about whatever Pizza Hut coupon I got for finishing the library's summer. I would read, you could do, yeah. make me do a lot of things for pizza. And like one of them yeah. was reading a book. And I was a kid, I was like, yeah. I'm gonna get the shit out of this Goosebumps book because I'm gonna get pizza at the end. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes we got Dairy Queen. I got yeah. nothing for reading. This is Leanna, I feel very bad for you. We got Pizza Hut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like remember it feeling kind of like as I felt like I was hustling people because I love to read anyway. So I was like, sure. Like, is there a way for me to get Pizza Hut out of this? Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll read this book. I'll read Goosebumps. Don't don't worry. I was worry gonna about do it. this anyway. Yeah. I'll read this baby babysitter club book, book all day. Hero. Everyone will get Pizza Hut because me. I am killing it. Yeah. So we have a question in the comments. <laughs> Which one? Is it this one? Yeah. <laughs> I was like very careful. I will, like drinking alcohol, not, I assume. Yeah. I didn't I really had no drink. water until I was five. <laughs> yeah. We're <laughs> doing blood. Possibly. Yeah. Blood. No, yeah. I didn't really 
until I was like 20. <laughs> like I, yeah, I, mean, I was Bethany 20. and I grew up Jesus-y. So we were, yeah. I was always the designated driver until I was of age. Yeah, I'd have a lot of friends who would drink and I was pretty like, nope, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'll just be the I sober one a lot here. Of, the first half of my college experience was largely me like, you know, being the designated driver and like peeling people yeah. away from uh, making bad decisions while they were drinking. So I'm I'm very good at yeah. kind of being the mother hen and, you know, well, pulling the hair and yeah. everything. So I was, the yeah. I would have been friends with you because you would have kept me like alive. Because yeah, I, know, I was like, good. Yeah, when I first I did, drank something. I got really drunk on a field trip in high school and it was a bad idea. Oh my gosh. Because I went to Christian school. It should not. Okay. Sorry. I went to Christian high school. <laughs> Me too. And they took the whole high school to see Passion of the Christ. And my friend was like, yes. hey, I got this water Our youth bottle. group went to see Passion of the Christ. Yeah, I went. To, I went to see it on theater. It was the thing. I went to see it on Good Friday, you, and then I went to an IHOP afterwards. To see Passion of the Christ. I know it was a bad idea. Yeah. I know this as an adult, but like she did a kamikaze where you take like a little bit off of every alcohol <laughs> bottle in the liquor cabinet, and you put it on a bottle. And you just like let's drink it. So we're at the in the bathroom of the movie theater. And we're just like drinking this water bottle, and I was like, "Oh no, this was a bad idea." And then we oh watched. <laughs> and then we had to go back to school, and I was in history class, and going, "Oh no, oh no, I am very drunk." <laughs> like, oh no God. one was no one was supervising me. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah, no, I had friends in high school who drank, but I was like very much not like the person who like wouldn't. But um, yeah, even in college. So I also I went to a religious college for undergrad. And so it was supposed to be a dry campus. So people had to either sneak it or like go off campus. So uh, um, yeah. so like I did because it was because I was also young, like because I, I graduated. At, I started college at 17. So my birthday was like the day like the day before graduation. So I went out for my 21st birthday because <laughs> I was like, well, I'm graduating tomorrow. It's fine. But even then I didn't drink as much as my friends and ended up being the one taking care of them. And it was like my 21st birthday. <laughs> I'm like, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's, that was very in character. <laughs> so, well, I just remembered I would drink whenever I would go to Europe because it was legal there. Like my thing was, I just wouldn't drink if it wasn't legal. So like I got to, I drank when I was, 15 I guess for the first time because it was legal wherever we were and then um we I did a uh exchange or whatever over the summer and that was like my introduction to like real drinking um when I was probably 19 so like we would just be day drunk all day in Cambridge um nice good times frosty jacks yeah I was, I was a wild youth Anyway. I was a rule follower. I was I was GC right, yeah. plus I'm just naturally a rule follower. So Yeah. I got like very, very drunk once because I wanted to see what it would be like. And I was probably like 21, 22. I, and then I had to work the next day and I was miserable and I was like, well, I'm not doing that again. So I mean like I mean I've had like drink like I mean I've gotten like mildly drunk, but like to that point where I was like my memories of that evening are fuzzy. Like, yeah, that I've never done that again. <laughs> so. I know to stop. Like, I stopped drinking because I know two thirds of a bottle of wine is like a lot and is going to catch up with me. Like, yeah. well, the older you get, too, I'm a right? lightweight. I mean, I'm such yeah. a lightweight. I've always been a lightweight, and it gets worse every year. <laughs> I didn't used to be, but now I am. Like when I was 21, sure, but now I'm like 33. So, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Same I just, I just kept drinking. So now um, I don't have, I don't have children either. So I think like you have a different circumstance. That's where I'm just true. like, I can drink all I want because nothing's coming yeah. out of me. Well, like my husband, my husband's not a big drinker either. Like he'll have like a drink occasionally, but like it's just not. Yeah. I'm more so. of a like, well, when I was allowed to be drinking, I, I like a drink with a meal kind of a thing, or like I like one or two social drinks. But anything beyond that, I just fall asleep. Like, honestly, that's always been my problem is that it puts me out. So, like, mm -hmm. yeah, whenever I try to, to drink sustainably, I end up just, like, having to take a nap. So. I, you just yeah. got to dance. You got to dance it off. That's how you <laughs> dance it out. Liana, what about you? 
which blade which part? when did you start drinking and oh, no, whatever blade, blade when did you when did you <laughs> yeah when i was five <laughs> i wasn't kidding my parents are big I was like, say your parents are European, so. for like the taste and like being connoisseurs and they wanted their children to also feel this way so like from a very young age they would like my dad would always drink whiskey and he would always dip his finger into his whiskey and give it to me and my brother to taste like multiple times throughout the night if we wanted and like drinking he made homemade eggnog at christmas every year which is like five kinds of alcohol (laughs) it was very strong and so they would just give us like one quarter eggnog three quarters milk at christmas when we were kids like i've been drinking my whole life yeah yeah (laughs) I mean, my parents would give me like a sip if we wanted it of like wine and beer. Usually, we're like, "That's gross." <laughs> like, oh, me and my brother liked it. We would do that. <laughs> Is it we figured throat? out that I had strep throat because whiskey hurt my throat, and my dad was like, "Oh, there's something wrong with her." <laughs> <laughs> so really, he was doing it for diagnostic purposes. That was the- <laughs> well. I mean, if you have a normal sore throat, just like a cold, like whiskey or alcohol will soothe your throat. But strep mm-hmm. throat is like open sores, which is different. So like we just they're like, oh, she's a sore oh. throat, whatever. And then like Mine's like, here, have some of this. And I was like, <laughs> he's like, uh oh, take her to the doctor. Whiskey's yeah. not working. He can't drink. That's why I didn't take her to the doctor. Interesting. Yeah. Whatever, okay, Bethany. Pro tip for your you parenting. Well. <laughs> yeah, Bethany. This is yeah, how you can die. the boys. Have, if yeah, the <laughs> just keep keeps them around to give to your children to see if they have strep throat. See if they have strep throat. <laughs> this is for diagnostic like, cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's healthcare is very expensive in America. We gotta, we all gotta find our shortcuts where we can. <laughs> like when so the nurse of, from school calls you, like, well, did you give him whiskey? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, give it, give it, a, give it a go. See what it, see what happens. <laughs> Oh, oh goodness! Wow. No. Um, what other pieces of vampire media do you guys enjoy? Like, what's like a vampire thing you like? Um, <laughs> I think we covered most of the ones that I really love. I mean, like you know. Okay. So, I really liked this, but it's very controversial. <laughs> Oh, well, after you talked about that, I want to read it. That sounds really good. I really want to hear you talk. Like, I really want to know what you think of this. Also, Liana, I feel like, would maybe like this. Because it's got, like, an anthropological aspect to it. Blade would be Yeah. Good. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. But, yeah, like, it's is. controversial. It's... I do think, though... Right, like vampires are always a little suspect and like a way of dealing with like power dynamics, whether it's done well or not. And so I don't know, I think it's, I think she flips things in really interesting ways and is doing stuff intentionally, but there are people who are really uncomfortable with elements of it. Yeah, it's like sci-fi vampires, right? Kind of, yeah. I mean, they're like a different species. They kind of, they like, um, um, yeah, like they're they're a different species from humans, but they are parasitic in some ways. Like they need humans to survive and live in like a it's like a symbiotic relationship, basically. But the main character is um, she well, so she wakes up with like no memory of her past because of reasons. Because there's also this like murder mystery and like courtroom trial aspect to it that ends up coming through, which is really interesting. But um, she has the body of like an 11 or 12 year old girl, but she's actually like 74 or something, which in her people's vampiric years is like an older teenager. So what people are really uncomfortable with is, uh, you know, their symbiotic relationships with humans are also often sexual. And so she has sexual relationships with human men and even though she's in her 70s, she looks like she's young. And so there are people who are very uncomfortable with that. I, like for me, like I get it. Like I get why people can't read it. For me, I was able to like separate in my head, like, okay, well like, but she's not actually. And so I wasn't that bothered yeah. by it. And I thought it was a really interesting way of like interrogating a lot of different things, but yeah. I agree. Yeah, you know, if you're 70, but you're in an eight year old body, like you'd want to get some. 
Yeah. The only way you're going to get some is from like a questionable <clears throat> human. So like, I get yeah. it. It's, yeah. it's uncomfortable, but at least yeah. she's not actually eight. Like at least she's 70. Yeah. Well, and also their species women females don't grow breasts. Like all of them? All of them. So they're so all even with like, so so they age slowly. So th eventually she would look like a human woman, like an adult woman, but like flat chested. Like flat as a board, nothing. Yeah. Why don't they got titties? Um, I think they don't like don't nurse or something. I don't remember. There are reasons for it. Well, so it's got like these actually, interesting, like I don't remember. Humans exactly. are somewhat unusual that we keep our teats basically, even when we're not nursing. Like there's yeah, a lot of have them. Yeah. yeah, I just got them. Um, and actually I am gonna have to go, but you guys keep going. Yeah, vampires rule. This is uh fledgling Thank you by Avia Butler for those who are wondering what book I was talking about. Yes. Yeah, well, we've been going for like an hour and 40 minutes. So I feel like that's yeah. the vampire part. Yeah. yeah. So final thoughts about anything. Everything in the world. Well, thanks Go. for having us. This was fun. Yeah, thank you for having yeah. us. It was fun. Yeah. It was a fun good. Halloween. We still got to dress up a little bit and yeah. be vampires yeah. and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I we had a it. safe Halloween. Yeah, Leanna lives like close enough to me that I could see her if I wanted to. <laughs> But like, not that sounds like I don't want to see you. But like, I do want to see you, Leanna. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to, if I wanted to. But like, you live close enough to me that I we can see how out. it is. <laughs> but like, I miss you guys. She lives far away from us. I know. Someday but, when the plague yeah. lives, we'll I know. All I'm like, I'm together. kind of hoping maybe Booknet Fest next year will happen. Maybe. 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 We'll see. <laughs> We're all like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> not according to Dr. Fauci. We're not gonna count yeah. on anything. We're not counting yeah. on this is, I'm holding yeah. I'm holding everything with open hands in yeah. in life at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Just sort of like we don't Yeah, who knows? Anyway. So we all happy now. Thank you guys. <laughs> We all enjoyed this. This is like a yeah. yes. this is a good. Um, Leanna, yeah. I know we decided this book a long time ago. Oh no, um, our November book of the month. Oh, I didn't bring my copy, but yeah. Name of the wind. Hey, have fun. We're going Which to Bethany has thinking of rereading. I want to oh, reread it. I don't. I mean, I don't know if I can reread it right now, but I do really want to. I think I do actually own a copy on Audible too, but I have so many. Yeah. yeah I have this, fall, like, but... yeah, it is. I'm considering doing this vlog project and now I'm wondering if it was too ambitious to try to do. If I do that though, I, I probably can't do other things. So we'll see. You I don't have know. To commit here now. That's those are the rules. <laughs> you have to decide, right? I'm just kidding. You don't. It's fine. <laughs> Mara, have you read this? No, I'm not. I am undecided if I will ever read it, but I will certainly not read it until all of the books are out. That's how I am. But you know what? Yeah. Everyone's bugged me so much that I'm going to read at least the first one. Like, I mean, I feel like it's well worth reading regardless. But I know, I mean, but like. Who knows if the third book, or however, whatever book it is, is ever going to yeah, come out? Yeah, I mean, that's that's my bottom line. I'm not, I will not read it at all until the third book comes out. I may or may not read it. I'm pretty on the fence. If I do, it'll be as audio from the library at some point. But Yeah, but you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm at least going to read the first book. Hey, you've got Blade Blade bossing you around. What are you going to do? Like You know, you, you can't say no to Blade. So that's yeah, our November book of the guys. Well, we yeah. pressured me into reading it the first time and I was and then I binged it in like three and a half days. <laughs> yeah. This is also a peer pressure. Your own good. Yeah. Positive like, peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. Um so anyways, ladies, I Thank love Thank you so much out for with having you. us. Yeah. Let, let, letting us come visit. Yay Great. vampire party. Ow. Yay. My lip has been rubbing against my thing and I feel like I'm gonna have this like a Yeah I finally took mine off. I was like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't talk about that. So. Everybody for the group shot. Yeah. I I don't have things in though. Oh no, wait, hold on. 
<laughs> I don't remember which fangs which I'm too drunk, but it's okay. Like I had yeah. fangs all the time. I have terrible fangs, so. Oh yeah, I should hold yeah. on. I should put this on Instagram too. Uh. <laughs> okay, there you go. I'm like, oh. yeah. Oh wait, I got one in. Hold on, Bethany. You gotta take a better one for Instagram. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You got okay, it. I got men. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> like that one of those moments when someone is holding up a phone okay. and you think they're taking a picture and you stand still and they're like, no, this is a video. It's a video. Like, oh, okay. oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, thank you so much for having us, guys. Uh, it was a good yeah. vampire. Happy Halloween. Halloween to everybody. Happy I'm glad Halloween, we got it, everybody. Like Happy Halloween. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>